All right, Katie's ready to go. This isn't really a new enemy type, because it's the same church wardens that we've seen, but they got a new weapon uh, that can actually fuck you up pretty good. Uh, unless you got grabbed by that, that weird thing that reached out and grabbed us when we first got to Cathedral Ward. Getting hit by those guys' crosses, uh, which again are only glowing red because we have over like 20-something in sight. Um, that's going to be the first thing that will inflict frenzy upon you. Oh, how gruesome. Uh, frenzy is the, the most dangerous of the status effects in this game. You got slow poison, rapid poison, beast hood we talked about uh, a couple videos ago. Uh, but frenzy is... Uh, there's similar stuff in Sekiro, I think, and Elden Ring that are, like, um, I think they're called Insanity. Uh, Frenzy is basically the same thing in-universe, uh, and, uh, in terms of gameplay, you have your, you have your meter building up, building up until it finally, uh, comes full and you get afflicted, but instead of having, you know, taking off your health slowly, or, you know, a little bit per second, or what have you, uh... Filling up your frenzy bar will... take off... 75% of your max health instantly. And that's... of your max health, not your current health, so... If you... lost more than 25% of your max health already, and you get frenzied, that's instant death. So a lot of the time, it is just a death sentence. If you go back and watch when I uh, went and got grabbed by that invisible monster um, in video 5? Yes. Um, you can see, of course, it inflicts frenzy upon me just before it drops me to the ground and, and insta-kills me. So, Frenzy's pretty dangerous, and some of the most formidable enemies in this game are those who can inflict, uh, Frenzy upon you. Of course, the, the Church Wardens, they're easy to dodge around. So, they're not too big a deal, even the ones with those, uh, those crucifixes. But, uh, there's one late-game enemy that I am just dreading getting to. Uh, because of the way that they frenzy you. And also because I am legitimately, in real life, very scared of them. Oh boy. Anyway. Before we proceed into the Grand Cathedral, uh, we're doing some side stuff in this video. We're going off to the left, uh, path to see where that leads. Because, uh... It's gonna take us to a new, uh, to an optional area that has, uh, some really important stuff that we do not want to miss. You can, you can finish the game without coming here if you want, but, uh, you're gonna have a bad time, so... That's why we're coming here. And, you know, because of the way the world is structured around the Hunter's Dream as your hub world, and then... You can just warp directly to the different checkpoints. This area we just went through with all the guys and the dogs, it's like... Whenever I play this game, it's like I only come through here once. Because the lamp is on the other side of this. So whenever I warp to this area, it's like... I warp straight to the lamp. Don't ever go through there again. Like, every... To the point that every time I replay this game now, I forget that that area is even there. I'm just like, oh yeah, left of the cathedral, and it's just Hemwick Charnel Lane, right there. Nope. There's a whole uh, rigmarole you gotta go through before you can get here. But yeah, the, uh... An item we picked up a couple videos ago for the first time. Uh, the Bone Marrow Ash. Uh... It, the flavor text said that it was, uh... It comes from here. From, from this, uh... Suburb? <laughs> On the, uh, outskirts of Yarnum? And McCharnel Lane. Bone Marrow Ash, uh, I don't use much, uh, but, um, it is a pretty useful item if you don't, 
really level your blood tinge, but you still use guns for more than just parrying. Um, it is essentially a, uh, a buff to your next shot uh, that you take for the gun. The, the next bullet consumed by whatever weapon you have uh, will uh, will have a better attack if you use a bone marrow ash on it. Do you hear the graveyard murmurs? Then it's almost time. Oh, I can't wait. I just can't wait. <laughs> Lots of, lots of wacky old ladies in this neighborhood. Yeah, that's a trap. I ain't falling for that one. Lots of good-natured trolling with the online uh, note-leaving system in this game. Uh, there aren't any in the main game, uh, only in the Chalice Dungeons, but... Um, a staple of the Dark Souls series is illusory walls that you have to hit with a weapon in order to reveal uh, passageways behind them. In Dark Souls 1, even, there were some uh, uh, checkpoints that were only available behind uh, illusory walls. Um, and so it's kind of a, you know, a, a Souls community joke in the, in the Dark Souls games to leave a note by a wall that you know full well is a real corporeal wall telling people there's an illusory wall there just to make some stranger you don't know, you know, hit the wall with their sword and feel like an idiot and you know, drop their sword's durability by a couple points. Fun little, uh, little friendly teasing, you know. Yeah, this game, like I said, in the main game in the DLC doesn't have any illusory walls, uh, but in the Chalice Dungeons it's a different story. Or so I'm told. Still have not gotten into them. Hey, maybe my fourth playthrough I'll do the I'll do the uh, do the chalices. I'm and I'm having really bad luck with viscerals today. Especially on this guy. All right, come get some. Come on, motherfucker. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I got him. And I totally didn't die there and jump cut to a successful take. Shh, no one likes a snitch, all right? This is also where we're going to we're going to start finding a lot more twin bloodstone shards. So, it's good to come here early. There's a couple tough enemies here. Um, but it's really not going to be that bad. You know, the, um... The hunter mobs and the, and the, and the church wardens, I think, are, are adequate preparation for, for anything you're going to find here. Because it's just... It's just, uh... You know, crazy ladies with, you know, improvised rural weaponry, a couple dogs, some crows, some brick trolls, which you've already fought. Only thing that might be a bit of a threat is, uh, if you remember that, uh, that really big fat guy with the big axe, the, uh, Executioner, I think his name is? Um, from all the way back in Central Yarnum, there was one of him just off in a corner where you could go and get killed by him your first time. Um, there's more of those toward the end of this area, so... If you got scared off by that first one, you might, uh, run away from this place with your tail between your legs when you see, like, two or three of them. But, by this point, you've gotten stronger, and... In my case, I have the Tonitrus, so... Uh, since they got metal on, they're, they're, they're weaker to bolt damage. Of course, bolt also... Also wrecks shop on, on a lot of, uh, you know, enemies made of organic material. So, not too shabby for all the rest of 
my uh, my foes here on this path. I'm really having bad luck with um, with parries in this video. Um, I don't know really what was happening. I was trying to sort of switch mainly. I was trying to use the pistol. And I thought, like, oh, maybe that was fucking me up. Like, maybe the pistol doesn't have enough, or, like, my timing with the pistol isn't as good, or it, like, is missing more than the blunderbuss. But, you know, right here I switched back to the blunderbuss, and I still got the timing wrong, so I, yeah, I think it was just me. I don't know. Maybe I was having an off day. The level design of this place is also some classic uh, From Software shit, because um, the, that first brick troll we came across behind him is uh, a gate that we can't open from the side we came from. So we gotta do this whole roundabout thing to get around there. Um, but once we get around that gate, though, if we come back to this place, um, you know, it's called Hemwick Chartle Lane. It is essentially going to be just that, like a, a a lane, just a complete linear shot to the end, uh, which is a, you know, it's a fun way to, to do a level. It's like you have an obvious linear path that's blocked off, so you got to go the whole roundabout way. It's a simple trick, but it's an effective one. I have been playing uh, the Demon Souls remake, uh, on, on PS5. I finally got around to that, and, um... Not doing quite as badly as I thought I would. Um, I know Demon Souls as the, the Ur Souls game, as it were, has a reputation for being brutal even for a From Software game. Um, I'm not finding it that tough, having been trained by this game and Dark Souls 3. Um... But the level design there is interesting because uh, on a on a macro level, uh, all of the um, all the stages in the game, the sort of five uh, worlds, if you will, you, you have a hub world sort of like in this one, and then it branches out into five different worlds that don't really interact with each other, and each one of those has like four levels to it, each with their own boss. Um, and once you finish the first level, you can do any of the five worlds and levels in, like, whatever order you like. Uh, so there's some non-linearity there. But the actual moment-to-moment -moment level design is, like, it can get really confusing, actually, in, in Demon Souls. Uh, there's lots of, of forks in the road and, and branching paths and, and shortcuts to find, like, even more so than, than this game, which is already, like, you know, I mean, you saw it the way Central Yarnum was laid out. It can get pretty confuzzling. Uh, Demon Souls even more so. That one also, even though it's a, a you know, a cushy, uh, bright and shiny PS5, uh, you know, 2020 remake, uh, the fundamental gameplay is unchanged from the 2009 original, so there are- there is some stuff that I- Ow, my fucking eyeballs. Um, there is some stuff, uh, in- in later Souls games like this one that is missing from Demon's Souls that I kind of feel the absence of, uh, mainly a, um, uh, the ability to jump out of a sprint. You can't do that like you can in this game and in Dark Souls 3. And also there's no plunging attack, which there is in, again, this game and Dark Souls 3. Both have the, uh, the plunging attack where if you hit the, the light attack button while falling, you end up striking whatever's below you with uh, a, re a really strong attack. Matter of fact, in, in Dark Souls 3, it's even... Uh, Damn near required for a for a boss, and I use boss in uh, quotation marks because the ancient wyvern is barely a boss in that game. It's more of a level set piece, um, where you come up these stairs and this giant this giant dragon comes up and tries to fuck with you, and you can hack away at its feet for ten hours if you want. 
far. If you go through this whole level filled with snake men, then you find your way up to the top of a, a scaffold just above him, and you can drop onto the dragon's head with a plunging attack and kill him in one attack. So it's really more of a gimmick level set piece than a real boss. But, man, <laughs> playing through it, it... It felt so fucking cool. It was great. I love it. Also, this lady, she fell down from up there and, like, her AI broke. I don't know why she didn't notice me behind her. Oh, and now her head's stuck in my armpit. Oop. Get off. Get off. I love it when goofy shit like that happens in these games. I also like the design on these dogs, because uh, they're just they're just dogs with a bunch of like blades rammed through them and sticking out of them. So it's like they're even angrier than the other dogs. And here, I was real worried I was gonna fall in this inky water, but there we go. Ooh, another rune we can't use. The Great Ones Inhuman Voices, ripples like a watery reflection. Great volumes of water serve as a bulwark guarding sleep and an augur of the Eldritch Truth. And then this one, the moon, can gain more blood echoes. The Great Ones that inhabit the nightmare are sympathetic in spirit, and often, call, uh, and often answer those who call on them. Hmm. When we found that uh, that umbilical cord in the uh, in the old workshop, it mentioned something about the great ones, something about great ones losing their child and yearning for a surrogate. Hmm. Still all too vague. Anyway, I don't uh, I don't do it much in this let's play, but uh, you know, I just left a note there for for another player to find. Kind of a little cheeky thing, like, of course they're gonna take a step forward to find that, that item, but... These guys are still, you know, kind of intimidating this early on, but, you know, if you struggled through the first one in Central Yarnum and now find you're able to take these guys out in, <laughs> like, three or four hits, it feels really good. You really do feel like you get stronger in these games, and I really feel like everyone's just all up in my shit today. Get out of here. Jesus, dude. All right. We're coming to the home stretch of this level. But first, let's just, uh, Cause this guy to spawn so we can take his blood shards. As well as some insight. Might as well pop some right now. Might as well also pop all our uh, all our blood echoes. Even though we're about to fight a boss, live dangerously. 40,000 big ones. Hope we don't die and lose them all. Alright, so the way this fight works is, uh... You actually know I don't want to fight this boss. Peace out. Alright.
Right. Now, if you're wondering why I haven't spent all my insight yet, or any of it, well, here we go. We're gonna go on a little shopping spree. We're gonna buy all of Father Gascoigne's clothes, as well as all of Jura's clothes. They get unlocked here in the insight bath when you kill them, respectively. If we had been able to kill Henrik, we would be able to buy his set as well, but alas. Yeah, we're just going to spend the rest on uh, some some miscellaneous items. Because ignorance is bliss. And you can see, I forget if I mentioned that uh, Insight and Beasthood are uh, sort of like inverse. They're, they're at odds with each other. Um, to the point that um, spending insight, especially large amounts of insight, gets you beasthood. The more insight you spend, the more temporary beasthood you, uh, you gain. Uh, I was talking about frenzy earlier also. Uh, the more insight you have, the more susceptible you are to frenzy, actually. Uh, since they they both involve uh, uh, one's eyes being open to the truth of the world. Insight is a is a neutral thing, but uh, yeah, but frenzy is definitely the uh, the downside the downside of having insight into the nature of reality. And I'm gonna I'm gonna boost my blood tinge up to ten, so it's uh, at a more serviceable standard. Uh, with the uh, immense amount of blood echoes we got from selling the doll's clothes. Farewell, good hunter. Like for real, you get like so many echoes for that. Anyway, back here to actually fight the witches of Hemwick. And yes, I said witches, plural. This fight's got some tricks up its sleeve. Uh, talking about things that Insight does, one of the earliest things you'll find that Insight does, besides changing some enemies' uh, appearances and attacks, is it drastically changes this fight. Um, the more Insight you have when you come in to fight the Witches of Hemwick, the more uh, enemies will spawn in during the fight, unrelated to the witches, who are invisible until you get close to them. There's two witches. Uh, I believe if you don't kill them fast enough, then more witches can spawn in as well. But they always start in the same place, so if you know where they're going to start... And you come in here with zero insight, having uh, pieced out and spent it all. Then you can make this really easy on yourself by just... Beelining straight for the witch, knowing that there's not going to be any other enemies trying to attack you. Uh, getting it down to pretty low health. And then going over to the opposite corner where the other one spawns in. Killing her. And then just going back killing the other one. I wasn't able to kill uh, either of them fast enough to prevent them from teleporting, so I do have to kind of guess where they are, but, you know, they're going to shoot spells at you from wherever they are, so... You, you don't really have to guess that hard. You'd see we got two insight for, for killing the boss, uh, which was enough to make one of the, the Mad One enemies uh, spawn in. But since we'd already beaten the boss, uh, they instantly died. So... That is, uh... You may call it, uh, cheese, but, uh, I call it, uh... B being smart about the way I do the fight. And hey, would you look at that! Runesmith Carol, student of Bergenworth, transcribed the inhuman utterings of the Great Ones into what are now Carol runes. The hunter retrieves this tool can etch Carol runes into their mind to attain strength. Provost Willem would have been proud of Carol's runes as they don't rely on blood in any measure. Whether this person here is Runesmith Carol themselves, uh, I don't know myself. Uh, could be, 
Could be them. Could just be some poor soul who the witches kept captive in their abode for some reason. But whatever the case, we are now able to equip runes, uh, which is going to open up a lot of possibilities for us. We already have some good ones. We've got uh, Moon, which lets us get more Blood Echoes. Lake just increases our defense, and Communion lets us hold one extra Blood Vial. Um, each rune has some variations on it. Uh, oh, I'm showing off here that uh, now that we have uh, single-digit insight again, these guys' lamps are normal uh, again, and they can't cast spells at us. So you can see how much it changes the uh, changes the experience of the game. Uh, yeah, so each rune has different uh, different tiers of of rune that upgrade your abilities in different ways. Like, we're going to be getting uh, another communion rune that lets you have plus three blood vials instead of just plus one. Uh, and the different tiers do stack, so if you equip two different communion runes, uh, if you equip the plus three one and the plus one one, that uh, adds up to plus four blood vials for you. So, it really lets you strategize what you think you're going to need um, and, and plan accordingly. There's also variations on some of them, like uh, the lake rune just increases your overall defense. There are different types of uh, lake runes which increase different uh, uh, kinds of defense, like um, Might well, one might increase your arcane defense, one might increase your, um, like, fire and bolt resistance, I think. Uh, there's other, I believe the, the sea runes, like the deep sea, clear deep sea and all that, uh, increase your resistances to, uh, certain status effects. So, we'll be getting a lot of those runes. Of course, you can only equip three at a time, as well as an Oath rune that stands for, uh, Covenants you've joined. Which we don't have any at the moment, but we'll be getting to those. Anyway, that trip to Hemwick actually turned out pretty well, so I feel pretty, uh, I feel emboldened to explore some more. So let's see what's, uh, over here to the right of the cathedral. We also, last episode, we got, uh, we received blood from Ariana, the, the, our, our prostitute friend. Ooh, hey, we are, we are a pro sex worker over here at, uh, Let's Play Bloodborne for Katie. I will not say no to a hooker's blood. Please, do not take that out of context, please. Um, yeah, Ariana's blood, as we saw, um, uh, Refills your health and also uh, boosts the rate at which your stamina regenerates, which is nice. Uh, the nun that we rescued in Yahargul can also give you her blood. Uh, and it also has a special effect in that it causes your health to regenerate for the, the duration of the effect. Um, so both of them are pretty useful. You gotta be careful, though, uh, in who you decide to take blood from and how frequently because uh, if you talk to the two of them enough, it will become clear that Adela is extremely jealous of Ariana. So if you refuse Adela's blood and take Ariana's... I forget how many times, uh, Adela will actually kill Ariana. He'll just come back and find Ariana slain and Adela... I. I forget exactly what the dialogue is, but, uh, you know, makes it clear that she killed her out of, out of, out of envy. Bless us. Whoop! That's right, forgot there is yet another NPC hunter here. This guy uses... is that... It might be Ludwig's rifle? I'm not sure. It might be the repeating pistol. Because it's something, it's something that has a... Like a... Um, a, a big kick to it. But not quite the blunderbuss. So 
So I took Ariana's blood the first time just because I talked to her first, but I'm actually not going to be taking her blood anymore because I don't want her to get murdered. I'm, I'm going to be uh, accepting blood from uh, Adela only just to head that off the pass. Um, because for one thing, I kind of don't want, you know, I don't want any of my friends at Odin Chapel to die in this run. Uh, at least when they're not supposed to. And, <laughs> wow, that was ominous. Uh, and also, Ariana actually, as a character, is uh, vitally important to getting the true ending. Not that anything's going to tell you that the first time, but... Uh, she's important, so we definitely need her alive. Anyway. Hey, what were you saying? Bless us with blood. Bless us. Okay, I mean, I, I killed two guys right here outside your house. Is that enough blood for you? I'm willing to bet that these people's favorite ACDC song is If You Want Blood, parentheses, You've Got It. Which, you know, they're... There, there are hundreds of worse ACDC songs out there. Now we could go down that way, but it's kind of a trap because um, there's going to be two uh, uh, marksman hunters up here. We're going to shoot us while we're trying to take out the enemies down there, so... Even if it means going through one of these guys, it's worth it to come up this way to get the drop on those uh, those gun guys. Even if it means mistiming a parry. That one worked. There we go. And hey, look. I'm not sure if it was because I had uh, fire paper on, but uh, that ended up finishing him off. First time I've we visceraled one of those guys, it was like <laughs> not even half of his health. Yep. So you can just go down those stairs and come down through a cave on your left, twisting around, or you can drop on top of these guys and just completely ruin their day. So that way we're not bothered by bullets raining down while you're trying to kill this guy. And this guy. And the Wandering Madness. The two Wandering Madnesses that's over there. I think I only get one of them. One was all I had time for. Yeah, they go quick. If you're not ready for them, they can just burrow underground and disappear. They come back up if you if you reload the area, but who's got time for that? I'm busy exploring. Light elixir temporarily shifts weight to make deflection of attacks easier, but it also slows your movement with no change to defense. I've never actually used this, so I'm not sure entirely what it does. Like, it's not just a defense buff. It slows you down. Might be like, take a couple free hits? I'm not sure. Anyway. This is a strange place. What's behind this door? Mm, can't go there. What the- No. What the fuck? No, not again. What the fuck? Are you fucking- Fuck this game. 